So the Shasta crayfish is one of only uh, three species of crayfish that's native to the state of California. Uh, the other two, um, the sooty crayfish, Pasifastus nigrescens, was in the South San Francisco Bay Area. It was very popular among uh, gold era um, San Franciscans, and the only specimens were, um, were collected at the fish market in San Francisco, and those are at the Smithsonian. It has not been collected since the, the about 1870 and is presumed extinct. The Shasta crayfish is found only in the mid-reaches of the Pitt River drainage, Fall River, Hat Creek, and the reach of Pitt that connects them. Um, the third California species is um, the uh, Klamath um, signal crayfish. Uh, Paspascus leniescus clamathensis, and it's in the Klamath River and other um, ocean drainages in northwestern California as well as eastern Oregon. So given that, the Shasta crayfish is the only extant crayfish native solely to the state of California. Right. And what would you say are the biggest threats to the Shasta crayfish? Although there was fragmentation of the habitat and the, the range, the distribution within the range that related to some habitat um, uh, destruction um, or elimination due to Mount Lassen's eruption in 1915 as well as hydroelectric development in the area. The primary threat, the major threat now is non-native species, particularly the non-native signal crayfish. So what active research is being done on the Shasta crayfish? There isn't a lot of research on the, on the species biology or ecology right now. Um, there are so few individuals in the wild that, that um, we can't afford to, to be using them for, for ecological, biological research. Um, that said, we're still researching um, means of non-invasive uh, genetic sampling so that we can monitor populations. But the primary um, focus is how to prevent the species from going extinct. So we're looking at um, potential refuge areas such as Rock Creek. Um, we're looking at other refuge areas that, that might work. Um, and we're, we're um, seeing how best we can prevent extinction of this species. Uh, can you tell us about the Shasta crayfish that you worked on? The Shasta crayfish that I worked on? Um, my research, my doctoral research, was looking at competition and predation between Shasta crayfish and the non-native invasive signal crayfish. I also looked at the effects of size on those relationships, found that uh, in the presence of signal crayfish, Shasta crayfish are much less um, active. They tend to spend more time hiding. Their growth rate drops, which would affect their, their fecundity, uh, their birth rate, and their survival. Um, and the larger the signal crayfish, the worse that, that effect was. Um, there is also uh, potential predation by signal crayfish. Signal crayfish can be cannibalistic um, and, and have been observed to initiate uh, predation on chest crayfish uh, in, in the lab, which was, of course, halted. Um, what about the habitat components required by Shasta crayfish? Um, well, that's, that's pretty easy. They like um, lava substrate. They like good-sized cobbles to boulders um, on nice lava, clean lava, gra lava gravel. Um, and they particularly um, do well in the spring systems that are so common in this area. Um, the springs provide a nearly constant volume and temperature year round. So you have, um, regardless of season in these spring areas, you'll have a temperature of about you know, 10 to 12 degrees Celsius um, all year round. And it, um, the spring flow also keeps the lava clean so that it's not um, silty. Rock Creek Meadow is, is a tremendous opportunity. This stream is, um, serves as the water source for Crystal Lake fish hatchery. Um, Shasta crayfish were found here back in the early part of the 20th century. And by looking at the, at the, the channel, we realized that we could move the current diversion, which is about 600 feet upstream, to this site right here and put the diversion here for the hatchery, the hatchery will have as much or potentially more water than they have now, and we can restore this upper meadow reach for Shasta crayfish. And this amount of habitat that we could gain by, by restoring this channel, so removing vegetation that's encroached and having the full flow, which would be um, 
something like 40 times what we see, I guess, um, right now um, would create enough habitat that could support something like 100 chest crayfish. So it's, it's a huge amount. I don't know that we have that many in the wild at this point. California Department of Fish and Wildlife has been very involved with Shasta Crayfish Recovery. They are an integral part of both the Shasta Crayfish Technical um, Review Committee and the Shasta Crayfish Recovery Team. And they've been very involved um, with this project. This project obviously could not move forward without full support of the department and of um, the, the, in particular, the, the hatchery, um, Crystal Lake Hatchery and the, the Region Hatchery staff. So they've been very involved and in help us, helping us move this project forward, including ways that, that we can um, do the construction with minimal effect on the hatchery. Um, and um, so they've been very supportive and I, I look forward to continuing to work with them. We started our tour at the existing diversion to the hatchery. So at that diversion point, almost all of Rock Creek water goes into the pipeline and that pipeline carries the water down to the hatchery. And that water um, is some of the highest quality water of any of the state's hatcheries. Um, so it's, it's critical to the production of the Eagle Lake trout and, and other trout at Crystal Lake Hatchery. And we were walking along the pipe because that pipe also goes through most of the, the upper Rock Creek Meadow channel that we want to restore. 